Hello and welcome to another CRZ DIY video. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at removing and replacing the rear brakes on our Honda CRZ and a quick look at getting to and removing the bearings as well. Let's get started. We're going to start off by loosening and removing our wheel to get access to the hub. To remove our caliper, we have a 12 millimeter bolt on the top and bottom. Now, if you're trying to remove the bolt <clears throat> and the slide pin here just spins in place like mine's doing, we can use a 17 millimeter wrench to hold the flats on this pin while we break the bolt loose. Once these bolts are out, make sure your parking brake is fully disengaged to release any pressure. We're also going to disconnect this bolt right behind the brake rotor here, holding on the brake line. This is another 12 millimeter bolt. Now we need to disconnect our parking brake cable here, sliding it over this tooth and removing these two bolts on the cable bracket to separate it from the caliper. And these are also 12 millimeter bolts. All right, with that bracket removed, we can keep our cable out of the way here. And now we can remove our caliper. And I'm going to just set this over here on the rear beam. So it's out of the way and this brake line doesn't get damaged. While we're here, by the way, this cabling is for our wheel speed sensor, which bolts into the back of the hub right there. Keep that in mind. Your brake pads may come off with the calipers, they may not, but go ahead and take them out now and make sure you uh, keep in mind the orientation if there's any specific features that make them directional. Slide those out. <clears throat> on the rear brakes here, this is on the driver's side, the wear indicator is on the top inside. Now to remove our caliper and pad bracket, we're going to move on to the back side here and we'll take out these two larger bolts. All right, and these bolts back here are 14 millimeter. Now, if you are choosing to replace your calipers, here's the bolt you would remove to disconnect your brake line. Make sure you have a bucket to catch that fluid. This is your bleeder screw here for when you reattach it and need to get new fluid in the system and air out. And of course, here's our parking brake spring and that's where that bracket we removed attaches. Okay, with that bracket removed, we can see these metal shims here for our brake pads. Now we're going to go ahead and replace those as well. Pop them out and uh, make sure your brake pad kit comes with new ones of these. <clears throat> now we can move on to the rotor. As you can see, we've got two Phillips screws here. This is a factory thing. You may or may not have these depending on past service history of the vehicle. Uh, but those are going to need to come out and they're probably going to be a pain. Grab some heat, grab some rust penetrant, whatever you need, impact screwdriver, uh, whatever it takes to get those broken loose and backed out because that's the last thing holding our rotor on here. These things are such a pain. On almost every Honda I have ever owned, I've had to just drill these out. And I don't put them back in because I don't want to give myself or some other owner in the future that same heartache. So <clears throat> I'm going to drill these out. Uh, once we have them off the hub, uh, we can try and use vice grips or something and twist the remaining studs out if we want to keep those threads clear or if we're replacing the whole hub and bearing it doesn't really matter but uh, let's get those out of here and move on after removing those screws with whatever method works best for you we can give our rotor a few taps to loosen it off the hub Now if you're just replacing part or all of your brakes, this is where you can stop and reassemble everything in the reverse order I've showed so far. But I also want to show you how to remove this hub and bearing assembly to replace that as well if you need. You're more than likely going to have to remove this whole assembly even if you just need to replace a broken or damaged lug stud because there's no easy clearance to hammer these backward out of the hub. So we're going to remove the whole assembly from the axle. We're going to start with this cap here which is concealing the spindle nut on the axle. 
So let's go ahead and get that hammered off. This cap is just held on by pressure. If you look closely, there's a thin line right here where it meets the hub itself. So we just have to tap this off. You can use a sharp uh, flathead screwdriver. I actually like to start with a dull knife blade and get that squeezed in and just make a tiny bit of a gap as we go around. All right, there you can see with some persistence and patience, we were able to just get that hammered out, just going all around in a circle over and over and widening that gap. And now we have our axle nut here. You can see it's staked right there on the end of the spindle. We're gonna ignore that and just use a giant impact to back this off and manually force that out. And then uh, we're gonna put a new one on afterward and add a new stake with a chisel or something right there. To take this off, we're gonna use a 32 millimeter socket. comes right off and now our whole hub and bearing assembly can be pulled off the spindle. Now with that bearing removed you can see up top there that's where our wheel speed sensor sits. I would recommend removing that before popping your bearing out. I forgot to this time around but uh, just to reduce the risk of damaging that as it is a rather fragile plastic part. So there's one 10 millimeter bolt in the back to pop that sensor out just a couple minutes to potentially save you breaking that part unless you're already planning on replacing it. With that said, if you've got a new bearing assembly, go ahead and reinstall that after making sure the shaft and everything is clean. There we go. With the replacement hub seated or your original one with new studs if that's what you're doing, we can install an axle nut here. And once it's fully installed, we're going to torque this down to 133 foot-pounds and then restake the nut. Our old stake should line up pretty close. Uh, if it doesn't, don't loosen the nut to uh, line up the stake. Um, Honda recommends you use a new one regardless. I'm just going to reuse the old one here for a demonstration's sake. With the nut stake to prevent that backing out, we can get our cap hammer back on here. With the new rotor in place, let's put our caliper bracket back on and then the brake pad shims and the actual pads themselves. These 14 millimeter bolts that hold the caliper bracket on are going to get torqued down to 41 foot pounds. Do also keep in mind that if you decide to remove or replace these caliper slide pins for any reason, if you pull these out, the top and bottom ones are slightly different, so make sure that you uh, keep which one is which marked or labeled in some way so that those don't get mixed up going back in. Now we can install our shims on the brackets. My kit came with two different uh, shapes of shim, so again, just match up the factory ones you removed or you know what was on there previously with the new type. Make sure those are the same. Next up we can insert our pads, again keeping in mind the direction of the wear indicator and the curvature of the pads themselves. Don't forget we also have this shim on the caliper to remove and replace. Now again, my kit came with two different sizes. This is the one that matches, but we also have this style here. I'm not sure if there's a difference possibly between the CVT and manual vehicles, and that's why they send two different parts. Mine is a manual, so uh, again, I'm just going to go ahead and use the part that matches my factory one. Now with all our replacement springs installed and the pads ready, we need to compress the brake piston to let it fit over these new larger pads which haven't been worn in at all yet. Uh, now unlike the fronts which you can just use a clamp to squeeze the piston in, these ones need to be turned. So we're going to insert a tool and turn the piston cl uh, clockwise here to rotate it backward in uh, and give us the space we need to fit this over the pads. Now, once you've got this rotated around, the factory service manual does say that there is an alignment mark somewhere on here that you should line up on the outside of the caliper. I am not able to locate exactly what they're talking about, but as I'm trying to mount this on my brake, 
I did notice that the brake pad itself has a little protruding nub here uh, that sticks out and it does prevent <clears throat> the caliper from going on if it's not horizontal. It seems like that dot actually slides through this groove here in the piston so just keep that in mind. I wasn't able to get my caliper fully seated until I got that lined up just right. With the caliper back in place we can reinstall our bolts on the slide pins as well as the bolts for the brake line and parking brake bracket. Those are all going to get torqued to 17 foot-pounds. All right, with all our bolts in place and tightened down, the last thing we need to do is get our parking brake cable attached here, and we're done on the back. But we're not quite finished overall. We should also check and make sure our parking brake is within spec, so let's do that to finish out this video. Now, the factory service manual recommends that when you give some real force on this and pull it, it's fully engaged around five to seven clicks. As you can see, mine goes way further than that. So if you're replacing your pads, you're servicing your caliper, or your cables are just stretched out, whatever it is, it's not a bad idea to check the adjustment, and we're going to do that by removing this plastic cup holder unit here. A flathead screwdriver or a plastic panel removal tool down here in this little slot will make quick work of lifting this part up. This is just held in with a few plastic clips along the bottom, no screws needed to remove. And here we have our parking cable, here's our adjuster nut. As you can see, this is just completely loose right now, tons of extra play. So here's the steps to adjust this. To start off the adjustment procedure, make sure this is loose, the brake is down, and then run the engine and press the pedal a few times to get fluid back to those rear cylinders and get the self-setting brake in position. Now looking underneath our brake caliper, we're going to make sure that the lever is touching the stop pin. That's this spot right here. So this pin right in the center is what it's stopping against. We're going to make sure that this is fully contacting that before we continue. Now with no pressure on the pads right now, get a feel for how easily the hub turns. So that's without any drag from the parking brake system. Next up we're going to raise this lever one click. And then we're going to tighten this nut here until we uh, can spin that back hub and feel the parking brake start to drag. A 10 millimeter wrench is what you'll need for this, and again, just tighten it bit by bit and check that rear hub until you feel the brake start to drag. Alright, we can see I've adjusted the nut up quite a ways here, and finally hit a spot where the brakes are dragging on the pad. It's harder to turn. Next, we're going to double check by releasing our brake and making sure that this lets us spin freely again with basically no drag. If you are still dragging, if you tighten it too far, loosen it a bit, raise a notch, check again. You may have to do a couple times, spend a few minutes to get it dialed in right. Once you do, we're going to check full engagement. This should be a lot tougher to pull as you get toward the five to seven notch mark. for full engagement, and that's all there is to it. Okay, with the parking brakes set, we can go ahead and bleed the brakes if necessary and then get our wheel reinstalled. Well, that's about all there is to it, to replacing the rear brakes and hubs on our 2011 Honda CRZ. I hope the information in this video was helpful for you. If there's anything I missed or any other uh, maintenance items or repairs you'd like to see a video on, please let me know. I'm always open to suggestions. And thank you so much for watching.